What's up everybody welcome back to the channel there are a number of disciplines that cyclists struggle with but of all the things that people struggle with the one that I think people struggle with the most is something that you would least expect and that's the recovery ride yeah I know you think it would be like maybe intervals or hill repeats or something like that but it's recovery ride because we're not predisposed to ride slower than we feel we're capable of so today as part of my self-care series I don't really have a self-care series but I'm gonna share some tips on doing a recovery ride properly all right let's go a recovery ride is a ride that we do a day or two after a hard effort something like a weekend hammer fest or you've just knocked out a century or even a heavy training block it is typically a zone one effort that is about 45 to 90 minutes long Think of it as reconstruction. It helps to loosen up your muscles and it's a transition to get you ready for upcoming rides. I found the best way to do my recovery rides is to just go solo. That way I'm able to control the time and the pace that I'm riding. But just to get me into the mood, I start out my rides usually riding on paths or I'll just ride very easy through neighborhoods because it's very easy for me to start picking up the pace for no apparent reason and then it's no longer a recovery ride. Now for me personally, the temptation is always high to do a group recovery ride and I'm doing group recovery in air quotes, but I avoid them or if I do them, I go in with the understanding that this is not a recovery ride. It's just gonna be a little bit of an easier ride than I normally do. Now, if you don't want to ride solo, just find somebody who will be happy to ride along and respect the pace that you're trying to accomplish on that day or find a newer type cyclist. I had the opportunity here to ride with young Daniel, who is by no means slow. He's actually a beast on the bike, but we had a great time just riding and chatting about cycling, school and racing. It was a good time. Now, here are my rules of engagement. First thing is that I make sure that I ride in a small chain ring and I'm going to keep it in a small chain ring and that for me usually means that I'm in a 39. I keep my cadence moderate meaning that I'm going to spin somewhere between 70 and 85 RPM and I don't do any sustained hills and I do not ride in a headwind. If it's very windy then all bets are off because it's no longer a zone one ride and it would be impossible to keep it as a recovery ride. You can also get that recovery ride in by doing what I call community service. This is a friend of mine, Denise, who is a new cyclist just learning the sport. She would come to the park when I would do my tempo training and just kind of spin around. So on one of the days that she'd come out, I would dedicate that to just riding along with her. It gave me an opportunity to stay in zone one, but also to help coach and encourage her as a new cyclist. And finally, there's the venerable smart trainer. The good thing about the smart trainer is that you could do anything structured with it. For example, if I am planning to do a zone two ride, which is really hard to do outdoors, I'll try to do it on a trainer because I'm able to control it and make sure that I stay in, the, in zone two for the majority of the ride. So likewise, when it comes to me doing a recovery ride, zone one, if I can't get outside, which I love to be able to do, I'll just use the trainer to make sure I can knock that goal out. All right, so that's my approach to recovery rides. And if you're like, man, this guy takes recovery rides seriously. Yes, I do, because I consider them to be an integral part of my development and my care as a cyclist. In addition to my recovery ride, one of the other things that I do is at least once a month, I try to make sure that I get a good, solid, deep tissue massage. That's one of those things that really helps me out. And I do stretch from time to time. But I'm curious to know what are some of the things that you do as part of your recovery routine? One of the things that I've read and heard is some people substitute bike riding for like a walk or a swim or just to do nothing. And while I think that's okay in terms of just making sure that you're active and you get the blood circulating in your body, those things I don't think engage cycling physiology. 
For example, in Grand Tours, one of the things that they do on their rest day is they don't just sit around or go for a swim or a jog. They actually get on a bike and maybe they ride at a lower tempo for a shorter period of time, but they make sure that they keep their cycling muscles and physiology engaged, and I think that's important. But let me know what you think about that. If you're a sports scientist or a physiologist or a coach, I'd be very curious to hear your point of view on that, on, on whether or not your recovery should be cycling or if it's okay for you to engage and do other things. All right, awesome. All right, guys, as always, our aim here at the channel is to inform, instruct, inspire, be blessed.